All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, we've got a good question over on our Discord here from Mike. This is about constraints and specifically for animators. So I'm going to do a little constraints for animators. A little video here. This is a lo-fi demo. We're not going to impress anyone. We're just going to understand the fundamentals and the basics so that you can get results. Mike over here on our Discord channel, create 3D characters. I'll put a link in the, the thing. Come over to our Discord. We've got lots of cool questions and stuff um, that can be answered and lots of topics. Uh, Mike says, so what's the point of referencing if you can't parent things to each other, like for animation? I, I'm trying to parent IK hands to another character's waist for a dance, and all I get are errors saying that I can't parent references together. So to be clear, everything in, in animation is always referenced, especially if you're in production. And there are good reasons for that. That's so that you can update the mesh and the rig at any stage, and the animators can just receive those upgrades. Um, Mike is getting a little bit frustrated because, you know, it, it does add some complexity, but it's good on the whole. So everyone does it. Um, so this is a, a very legitimate question from Mike here. So, um, uh, and Mike Meister, another Mike answered that very well. And then we've got, um, we got unknown Hayes down here, did a great job with GIFs and stuff too. Now I'm making these videos. So, um, let's get straight into it and explain how to do this. So we've got, uh, two controls. Yeah, and they're referenced. So this is like a very, very simple rig, which I've referenced in called IK. So if we try to delete that, it's not gonna let us gonna error. Same with this one. These are referenced in the reference editor. So two rigs. Um, the other thing is um, we can't now parent that to this. So what Mike wants to do is this is, you know, got some animation on it, someone dancing. This is another character's wrist and it wants to be parented to that. So he wants to go like that, that, and then parent it. And he's getting that error there. Cannot parent a reference object to another reference object. That is true um, because the hierarchies of these guys are locked. That means they can't be parented. Um, you can parent things, by the way, to like, you can parent the root to something else. So I can parent that to that. Yeah. But anything within this, if I'm to undo that, anything within that there, like that guy, I cannot parent it to that. Um, so this structure must remain exactly the same. And that's so things don't break. Uh, and so that's actually a good thing. So how do we do this? Um, well, you can use constraints. So parent constraints are very, very easy. So select that guy and the thing that's going to have the constraint on it. In other words, the driven object is always the last in a constraint. And I'll explain that why in a second. But um, for now, uh, always the thing that gets parented is the last object. So it's reverse from regular hierarchy parenting. And then we can go to uh, the constraint menu and we go to parent constraint here to the options. There's this little option here, this maintain offset um, guy is very handy. Um, with that on, uh, the object will stay put in its current place. So now that we've done that, um, we can now move this guy and that guy will move. Now I'm gonna undo that a little bit because I did notice one thing. I've got some keyframes on this guy. I'm going to remove those actually. And we'll do that again. So we select that, that, and then come across to here and hit the add button. That will add a constraint. What it does is on that, it's now added a little node and that's the constraint. So now there is a relationship between that guy and that guy. Okay. And the relationship is apparent. And so when we orient and translate that guy, this guy will always move it with it. And that's how it's done. Now, um, it would be lovely. If it was that easy. It's not, unfortunately there are more steps. So what is the problem with this? Well, the problem is, well, we really wanted this guy over here. Yeah. But if we move him over there and then move it, it snaps back. Okay. And then we're like, oh, well, we need a keyframe on it. So we, we key it. Yeah. And then this thing turns green and you're like, why is that green? Um, and then, oh no, it doesn't, it's broken it. Okay. So that's a, a bit of a big deal. Um, and everything doesn't work. So what green means is it means you've got keyframes and a constraint on it at the same time. And what wins in the battle, as I like to say, is always the constraint wins or the last thing that you did wins. So in this case, we put a keyframe on last, so it wins. So the keyframe now is overriding the constraint. So that means that the keyframe takes precedent. If you put a keyframe on first, so we can do the reverse of that and I can come in here. Now we've got no constraint, so there is no relationship. This has a keyframe on it first and I'm gonna do the constraint now. I've got a marking menu that does that exact same thing. Parent and maintain offset is that guy. And then this one is no offset. So. That's shift V if you're using Zoo tools. Um, now we've got same thing. This is green, but this time this guy follows and you're like, hang on a minute. What? That's green. Last time it broke. This time it doesn't. What's going on? Well, the greenness um, tells us we've got both, but 
the one that was last is the most important. So in this case, the one that we put on last was the constraint and it wins. So it's winning now over the keyframes. Okay, so a little bit there. So how do we fix this? Well, as the guys mentioned in the Discord thread, yes, uh, we use a locator setup and there's, you know, as all things in Maya, there are many ways to skin a cat, um, but let's go with the locator method first to explain how this works. So let's create a locator. Um, let's shift L on my hotkeys. We can make that quite large, so we can just make it bigger. And I'm gonna group it. So now we've got a locator with a group. The group is important, as we'll see in a second. Now, when you're making constraint, you might, if you're quite switched on, you might be like, well, can't you just constrain to the IK group? That way this will move. Let's do that just to show you. And we can parent constraint um, with the offset to the group. So now the group has an offset. Uh, sorry, I'm going to redo that. Wrong guy. So we're going to do this way to that guy. Okay. And then we do it with uh, parent constraint, maintain offset. So now it's the group that's constrained. That means that now um, everything works. And ta-da, now we've got keyframes that we can keyframe. Okay. So that's interesting, isn't it? So now we've got what we want um, already. And we can key this guy around and like as the hand sort of like slips around and, you know, maybe grabs a little bit, uh, we've got control over the wrist, which is what we want. Um, the downside of this is that a lot of times in rigs, you know, this is already controlled by things. Um, it's already got a constraint on it. Um, you're now adding constraints to constraints uh, and it can get quite confusing. So this is definitely a legitimate thing and something we're going to be doing zoo tools with a, a tool so that it handles everything for you and don't have to think however um in the case of a lot of circumstances it's far easier to build an extra control and take over so i'll show you how this works so we've deleted that constraint now there is again no no relationship there this guy here just has a keyframe on it we're going to remove the keyframe as i always say don't mind the beeping in the background uh, I'm just, sorry, deleting that keyframe with my hotkey, control shift B. Um, all right, the beeping in the background, don't worry about it. That's uh, my internet beeping so with no batteries. Um, okay, so now we've got this and we want all this to work. So this guy, to explain it fully, let's now um, put this roughly where we want it. So we're gonna put it, you know, near the wrist, near the waist, sorry. And then we're gonna go that to that. And we don't want to do that. We want to go that to the group. Okay. And now with that, we're going to do parent maintain offset. That means now the group is now moving with the waist control, right? So that means the locator will go with it. Okay. And so that means whatever we do, do here, we've got this off ability to offset the control. If we zero this out, it's going to go back to where we started, which is lovely. Okay. So that's, that's that. Now what we can do is we can say, Hey, this arm here, like this arm, um, is like doing its thing over here. And then it wants to grab. Well, now we can go, Hey, I want that guy there to go with this. So you can grab this one first and this one second. That means we want to snap this guy to that one and constrain it. And so we go parent maintain, uh, no offset this time. So I actually want to put the constraint on, but I want to snap the cube to the locator. And there we go. And now when this guy moves, okay, that's that. This guy now has the constraint on it. So we're sort of disabling this guy temporarily. And then this guy here now moves that. This has no keys, so we're, we, we can do whatever we want on that. And that's how you can sort of like happily animate around. So you can now go, oh, okay, well, I want that. And then over here at frame 10, I want a slight adjustment of the, of the hand, you know, when the wrist moves. And then over there, I want it to stay for a bit. And then over here, I want that to go like that. Okay. And we have what we want. Now the problem comes with, okay, that's all well and good. But now as the hand comes off, we now want, um, you know, this guy to do, you know, jump up in the air somewhere and no longer be constrained to this guy. So that's called animating constraints. Now, something that I'm big on is I don't really animate constraints very much. So um, this is like a professional animator thing and it's like hard to explain to people, but um, this is something I'm very big on. You don't try to animate constraints. You can wrap yourself up into all sorts of problems. It's not a simple way of doing things. It's overly complicated. 
And a lot of people think the complicated is good. It's it's not. I've worked on some of the most um, complicated shots um, in my teams. I'm always giving them because I can do them. People wrap themselves up in all sorts of problems. Okay. So instead of doing that, um, what we can do is just for the bit, like we're quite happy with all that animation. Now it wants to come off. Now we can bake. So we can go, hey, up to frame, I don't know, 35. I want that to follow this, but I no longer want any of this constraint business to happen. I don't want that control to be blue. That's annoying. So we can just come in here and I'm going to make that timeline go from zero to 35. And we can bake. So we have a bake tool in ZooTools. It's a really good one and does a lot of fancy stuff, that one. Uh, but in the animation, it's very, very, very similar to that button. Okay. So we can just grab that if you're not um, on my stuff and then you just go like that. And it bakes everything. Okay, it puts extra keys in here, which I don't like. And delete like that. Um, but anyway, that's now baked that to keys. Now it's still got a constraint on it, but the lucky thing is now we can delete the constraint. So that means that now this locator is now driving, no longer driving, has no influence over this. And we can essentially just hide the locator. Okay. So that, you know, that's no longer has any influence over itself. However, it looks like it's all moving wonderfully together. That is because this is now baked. There is a keyframe on every frame and that is nice and locked and it's doing its, its thing. And now at frame 60, we can start to like move that off and we can key this, you know, in world space doing what it wants to do. Yep. Okay. And then people are like, but you know, the director come back and it, he made changes here. Yeah, what do I do? Because now I've got baked keyframes and this is really hard to, to deal with. Yeah. Well, the way I deal with it is I just go back only for those frames. Yeah. And then you go, hey, I want that guy there to be back on this locator. We still have it in the scene. So the locator is doing exactly what we want, right? But we want to change the locator, like, because we want to change animation. So now you can just go, hey, I want that guy there to be back on the locator, but only for these frames, only for the 35 frames that we have it. And then you go, hey, let's go, um, this guy needs to follow that. So it's the last one, remember? And then this is why I have hotkeys because it makes it really quick and we can do no, no offset in this case. Um, and now we are back. The constraint will win, which means now we can reanimate this guy. We go, oh, I didn't really want that. I wanted a slight adjustment like over there and copy that key to the frame to that one because everything's now relative to the waist. And now we've got our animation tweak that the director asked for, or maybe we just thought it would be better. Yeah, now if we make this timeline longer, now everything's stuck here because the keys that are happening on this are overridden by the constraint. But uh, that's fine because now we can just bake back this. So we want to do the same thing as we just did, bake it on those keyframes. Now, if you're using our tools, you can just select the ones you want to bake and do that. That has baked it again, like nice and quickly. And now we can delete the constraint. Okay. And now that is now following this yeah and we can make this timeline longer and we've got back to what we want now in a tool workflow definitely there are tools that you can use to make all this stuff way easier and we're going to be adding them to zoo as we go along one of them is like um, a follow tool where you can just temp follow so you can actually animate the locator how you want it's a bit annoying because the wrist doesn't follow but then you can just go, hey, I want that to follow that for only those frames. And it just does it all and deletes the constraint for you. It's like a matcher, but over time, that's a very easy tool to write that I'm gonna put in Zoo, but uh, we just don't have it yet. So that is, and then there's another one where we can actually do a space switch tool, which is really cool. And then it works on the groups underneath. So you don't even need this setup. So that can be completely gone. And then the tool can be really smart and mix constraints together with existing ones, which we'll be, you know, doing in Hive and, you can do some really cool stuff and it's really lovely because it means you now no longer have to work with locators and you can work with space switching and matching, which all has to be scripted in Maya. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that this is the, the very like manual way of doing it. I guess you could say now the last part of this is a lot of animators use locators and it's really, really big. However, um, if you do have, you know, a control creator like tool, like in zoo, you can just come in here and change that it doesn't have to be a locator. It's only a locator because of animators don't have these tools. Okay, so what we can do here is we can search for something and I don't know, you just browse through and go, I don't know what I'd want here. Like something that's really like obvious, you know, 
So I'm going to, in this case, use a cog, right? And we can now shape parent that to this guy here. And there's a number of ways of doing this, but one of them is, I think I can do a shape parent. Let's try that. I haven't done this for a long time. And we can select the locator and now shape parent that in. Nope, we can't. So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do that. And then this guy, that guy there. So we want that to be the locator and you can do it. So you can do it anytime. So match. Okay. I want that guy to be big, right? And that's what I want to use as instead of a locator and we can color it as well. You know, so we'll make it like bright yellow. So it's obvious So we don't like the locator. We want it to be that instead. Um, now we can come into with zoo tools, shape parent stuff. Now this is all stuff you can do in code in Maya, but it's not exposed to the animator. So we have to tool it. And we've now got a shape parent replace. So you can now go, Hey, I want to go that to that. I believe this works. Shape parent replace. And we've now attached that out of the new control group. So that means that's gone. And now it doesn't look like it, but that actually has got the nerb shape underneath it both. And we can just go in and delete the locator. That was fancy, wasn't it? And then uh, we can come in and go, hey, shapes off. I want the DAG objects only. This guy here now is our locator. Yeah. And it's still got all the animation, everything, everything's kept. Now, instead of doing that, like what I just did then, and you no, know, shape parent replacing, which is that button in zoo, um, you can do that anytime on a locator. Now we just got a nicer control to look at rather than locators. Um, I would do that at the beginning. So instead of building locator, which I got a hotkey for that, um, we can just come in to control creator and just build that, create it in the center of the world. Yeah. And then group that. So, and it's already grouped, so it's ready to go rather than the locator. So, um, I just thought I'd show you that, that a lot of people are using locators and talk about animes, talk about locate. Everything's a locator. Um, that's great, but you know, locators can be really annoying. They're like green things and they're, they're hard to like see and then they always look like locators. Um, with Zoo, you can really um, change your shapes and, and use any sort of control shape that you want rather than locators. And it's super easy because you've got a huge selection of shapes and you can color them at any stage there. Yeah, so I just thought I'd show you that. Um, all right, there you go. That, that is the tute. That is how you constrain stuff together. This is a referenced hierarchy. And uh, that should be that should be pretty clear. All right, there you go.